Okay. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to day two of our uh, serious support care conference. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Monica, um, and I have been around camp for a very long time, um, but really, really excited to say that I am now I camp all the time. I work here full time. I have the dream job. Um, so I got involved with camp when I was a college student um, and I was in dance marathon and we donated money for the treehouse. So every time I see family photos that are taken at the treehouse, I'm reminded of, of some of my roots as to what got me involved. But um, being at things like this is really what has kind of propelled me into getting further involved with North Star Reach and um, in the Serious Fun Network. Uh, I worked for Michigan for a long time. Um, I have been a development officer for my whole career um, and was doing it for a different place um, and kept camp as my safe space. So I think a lot of us can think camp is this world away and you don't have to worry about anything else um, because camp covers it for you. Um, and uh, through the pandemic, I um, had the good privilege to sit in on uh, camper meetups and the care conference last year. And I realized how, I realized again, how important it was to make sure we could provide these opportunities for free. Um, so now my full-time job is to make sure that that happens. I um, meet with our supporters, uh, try to find new supporters and spread the word far and talk about something I am so passionate about. And that's everyone here today and your kiddos and your families and the times that you allow us to spend with you. So thank you for letting me be here today. Um, you'll see two sides of Monica, the development officer side and then camp counselor side. So we'll shift into camp counselor a little later. Um, uh, but we're really excited that you're here and thank you for letting me um, Say hello. Uh, I'll pass it off to Coach Michael Par or Michael Coach Parker, whatever order you want. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit more about you, and then we'll play some games. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Monica, for that transition. I caught it and brought it over to my side of the office. And uh, yeah, so my name is Michael or Mike or Coach or Michael Parker or Parker. I have so many different names nowadays. I don't know which to kind of have as the most significant one, but I respond to all of them. And so I don't know if a lot of people know the history of the nickname Coach, and that kind of gives you a little glimpse into who I am as a person and how I kind of got involved with camp as a whole. Um, so this is an insider moment because usually I try to have that as my recruiting tool of like, why does everybody call you coach? Well, come to camp and then you'll find out. So you're going to get a little glimpse into that story right now. So I started going to school at the University of Michigan, Dearborn, studying accounting and finance. Business was my mindset. Numbers made sense to me. Two plus two was four every time. Loved it. Loved the idea of wearing suits all the time. So it was like business. That's where I'm supposed to be. And so started to do more of that. And then realized with my bubbly personality and thinking about accounting, it didn't seem like the right match for who I wanted to be long term. And so I decided to look into more nonprofit work, uh, helping back, giving back and serving. And so I got a job at the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor working on the fundraising side, my first kind of step into the idea of service and giving back with my time and my energy and my actual uh, profession. So that was kind of the launching pad. And then at the same time that I was starting to work for University of Michigan was the same time that North Star Reach was opening up. And so a good friend of mine reached out to me on Facebook with a message saying, hey, there's camps opening up. Would you like to volunteer? And I was like, no, uh, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I don't think I would want to do that. It's wilderness. It's kids with serious health challenges. I don't know. I'll be prepared for it. And so he was like, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's meet. Let's talk. And kind of learn a little bit more about it. So got a chance to have a conversation with him to learn a little bit more and he convinced me to do it. And so we got together for our trip up to camp and we had two days worth of training to make sure that I felt as prepared as possible as a volunteer. Um, and I wanted to be the best counselor that I could ever be. So I had a clipboard to make sure that we were on schedule. I had my watch on so that we had our time going. And so I'd be like, all right, being with the oldest boys camps, I was like, all right, guys, we got two minutes before we have to go to arts and crafts. Make sure you got your lanyards, your water bottles. We got to go. 
And so then one of the campers in my group was like, oh my gosh, you're just like my coach. And before I knew it, it just kind of took off from there. And so it's an organic, original camp name by campers, and it has impacted my life in more ways than I ever thought possible. It's literally changed my life because I went from doing uh, working at Michigan to working at camp um, starting in 2019. So really grateful for that time. And luckily, the coach nickname and what I do go really hand in hand. So I work with the awesome volunteers that come to be a part of camp. And I help train them. I help coach them through their scenarios and different aspects of camp and make sure they're feeling as comfortable as possible because we want to find opportunities for everyone, whether it's a couple of hours or a week. We, we try to find those opportunities for people to volunteer, whether you're 19 years old or 75, 85, not, you know, the range is out there, whether you're in professions of uh, fundraising or photography or engineering, all are welcome. We try to find spots for everyone. So if that's something that kind of sparks a little interest, sparks a little campfire for you, don't worry, I'm your guy to find those different opportunities. And so that's a little bit more about me and how my nickname came to be. But uh, we're also going to do some camp activities, camp games. So the counselor side is on. I wish I had a hat so I could turn it to the counselor side, but I don't have one. Um, and we're going to play a little bit of a game. So this is something that we would kind of do with our camper meetups, something we would do with uh, a new group of people to help build some interests, commonalities, and comfortability with talking with each other. So it is uh, kind of a would you rather or this or that kind of vibe to it. So the first question, and feel free to type in the chat because I know people are kind of starting to wake up or you know getting ready for the day or you know getting ready for this conference. So feel free to use the chat function of Zoom. But the question is, would you rather have pancakes or waffles? Okay, would you rather have pancakes or waffles? And if you would like to include why, feel free to do that as well. Pancakes, Marianne. Okay, Monica says waffles. Very nice, very nice. Gonna have this be bigger. Emily says waffles, waffles, waffles. Oh, waffles. Waffles is coming in. Sorry, Marianne. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's another controversial one. Um, are you more of a dog person or a cat person? Ooh, Monica, I, this might be a surprise to you, but uh, I'm a dog person. Oh. <laughs> you almost got me. Me too. Uh, Elaine Shoemaker says dog. Brenda's dog. Marianne oh. says both. Uh, I wonder because she has maybe potentially both or a big heart for both. Um, those are really good ones. Uh, let's see. Next question. And this kind of goes into line with the season that we're in right now. Um, are you hot coffee or iced coffee? Hot coffee or iced coffee? Depends on the temp. <laughs> Emily says hot. Hey. I do not understand that. Always hot. Cat says tea. Okay, Cat, I want to give you a virtual high five. It's coming in hot. Hopefully, it doesn't mess up your camera too much. But, Cat, I am with you on the tea. I don't usually do coffee. Tea's my go to. Love it. How about? Um mountains or the ocean? Ooh, mountains or the ocean. I like that. I like mountains that. for sure. Mountains. Get a lot of mountains. Depends mm -hmm. on the season. No, ocean. depends on the season. Kristen, uh, I'm more of a mountain man myself. <laughs> <laughs> I would say a little bit more of ocean. It's getting there. I just can't swim. Um, so that's kind of like, ah, not my, not my area of expertise, but I can definitely uh, walk a mean, mean mountain. Um, how about, here it is, there you go. Uh, are you more, uh, uh, Photos or videos? Do you like taking photos, cool. being in photos, or do you like making videos, creating videos? So more on the artistic side. Ooh. I wish I were good at videos, but luckily I just have friends who are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's nice to. Barbara says both. Ooh, Emily says photos. Kat says photos. Single photos. Moment. A single moment. Ah, 
Yeah. I love that. How about, um, we'll get a little more campy in this one, um, sleeping in a cabin or sleeping in a tent? Cabin, cabin, cabin. <laughs> I have neither hotel. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic, fantastic. Oh, man, I love that. Tent. Tent. Randy coming in. Tent. No one's no one said cabin without AC. <laughs> yeah, AC in the cabins is super important. Um, for our next, uh, this or that question, uh, I'm trying to see how I can phrase it. But it has to do with s'mores. And are you a roasted s'more or roasted s'more or just regular plain? Give me the ingredients. Don't need to have it roasted marshmallow or anything like that. Oh. Kind of a regular roasted s'more marshmallow or just give me the ingredients and I'll eat it plain straight as. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Some people enjoy, <laughs> I don't have the time and don't want the mess. I'm not saying me, but you I am saying you. the weird s'mores that we see at North Star Reach. <laughs> I had a camper put a banana on a s'more and then I tried it and it was delicious, so. <laughs> marshmallow. Um, Ooh, toasted chocolate. How about um, sitting by a campfire or going to like a closing campfire, like talent show. So talent show or sitting by the campfire. 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 Awesome. A lot of campfires. Talent show hundreds. So fun to see the kids shine. Yes. Yeah. Both sound great. You're right, Tracy. That's right, girl. Both are great. Uh, both are really awesome. But I, I, me personally, I like a, a good campfire. Um, but both can have that moment. Um, that's actually a great segue, uh, Monica just provided for us to go into another activity that we would do similarly around a campfire or around a Zoom screen, which is Gimme Gimme, a game we played last or yesterday. It feels like almost last week, but literally yesterday. Um, and so the idea is around, it's kind of frames a, a, scavenger, a scavenger hunt, if you will. So it's going and trying to find something that represents the prompt. And feel free to either uh, unmute your screen and show us, or you can type what you would think about in the chat and kind of explain a little bit as well. Um, but the first thing that we would have for Gimme Gimme is Gimme Gimme something that helped you through the pandemic, okay? Gimme Gimme something that helped you through the pandemic. So it could be an object, it could be a picture, it could be a moment, um, but something that helped you through the pandemic and feel free to type it in the chat as well. Diet Coke, I see you, Marian. <laughs> Yoga and walks, television, I agree. Oh, Yoga and walks. Welcoming a baby girl, congratulations. Oh, congratulations. That's awesome. Hey. Christy coming in with the cat, love that. Oh, yes, love it. Oh, yeah, another baby boy. Yeah, baby boy. <laughs> this is good. Awesome. Right. Cat, I agree with that, 100%. Mine's was definitely, I wish I could, like, take a picture and then flip it so then you could see yourselves because that's definitely what helped me out through this entire pandemic is being able to have community with people uh, in new ways and a lot of different fun ways as well. Um, FaceTime, my grandbaby's in Texas. Oh, yeah. Jackson and July. Oh. Gotta love that. Oh, speaks to heart. Okay. Um, okay, we're gonna do another one of um, gimme, gimme, uh, something that helps you helps you sleep at night. Mm. So it could be a, some, something you play or something you use. For me, I, it's my calm app. I use sleep stories every night. Otherwise, my brain uh, does not shut off. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> This is, we are not sponsored by Calm, but I do recommend it. <laughs> a warm bed. Hey, you know what? I'm a bad sleeper. Yeah. Like exhaustion helps me sleep at night. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only thing that helps me sleep. 
and then complain about their exhaustion. Where, uh, so we have a warm bath, having a tidy home, Emily, I appreciate that. Having things in order is great. Uh, prayer and a glass of warm milk, so warming for the tummy and the mind and the heart. Uh, Unisum, a reliable baby monitor. Yes, yeah, so you don't have to put those worries, you can put those worries away. Uh, Peloton sleep meditation and noise plays on YouTube. Yes, those are really, really good. Really, really good. I'm learning some things here. This is exciting for me. Yeah, yeah. see that Barbara Bell who just commented is my mom. It's from her. She doesn't <laughs> sleep either. We, we have these brains that never shut off. <laughs> so, uh, well, hopefully through these uh, responses. Yeah, got some good tactics that. here. Right? Ocean <laughs> sounds from Kristen. Love that. Love totally that. agree. Awesome. I think for myself, it's a uh, similar exhaustion or I will play myself a uh, tune on my guitar ukulele and try to lull myself to sleep, uh, which is interesting because I'm attentive to the fact that I'm playing, but then also trying to go to sleep. So is it helpful? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> um, so our last prompt, which I think goes really well with what we're trying to do for yesterday and today, and hopefully the time after that we are together is gimme, gimme, something that helps you with self-care okay give me give me something that helps you with self-care mm. and it starts support groups ah moose love that kelly <laughs> a lot of fluffy uh moose friends out there colleen says running Capable babysitter. babysitter. Absolutely. Yes. Love that. Best friend. Yeah. Best friend. For Aww, babe. Babe. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Family, this community. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Yeah. All those are really great. Um, really great. Thank you so much for sharing those opportunities or those uh, things that give you self-care, things that help you with through the pandemic. Uh, thank you for showing some interest and kind of stepping out a little, a little bit of your comfort zone and sharing that stuff. Um, you know, we try to have these be act opportunities to build somewhat of connections and talking points. But at the same time, this entire uh, conference is built around self-care, built around looking after each other, built around supporting each other. And so we hope that you continue to have that today and many days after we are done here because it's going to be a journey to get through all of it. And it takes community, it takes family, it takes support to make that happen. Um, so I'm going to pass it on to Marianne to continue on. And thank you so much for getting a chance to learn about Monica and myself and have some camp fun. Thanks, everyone. You know what? I actually want to ask one of the three of you um, program camp people or Amy, any any of you, um, if you could explain what we mean by challenge by choice here at camp. I feel like it's a concept that I wanted to say so many times yesterday um, to the people participating and um, I'm not great at explaining it. So can one of you take that for me and explain what, what we mean at camp by challenge by choice? I could start and then y'all can, uh add in anything I missed. Um, so for those of you who have been to camp, you know we do a five finger contract, which I don't need to go through all of them, but our pinky is challenged by choice. And it's actually a really core tenant to what we do at, at everything we do at camp and at North Star Reach. Um, the idea is that we want our campers, our participants in conferences, our campily to, um, challenge themselves, but they get to choose how to do so. So when we're at um, something like Gaga Ball, so we're playing a game for some kids getting in and trying to win, that's the challenge and that's what they choose to do. But some kids are pretty nervous to get into that pit. So they want to, they're choosing to participate by yelling for their friends. Another friend might say, you know what, like screaming really overwhelms me, but I could get water for everybody. So each camper participated in challenge themselves in doing something, but they got to choose to do so. So in a setting like this, some of it might be you're choosing to go off, um, off of mute or turn your video on. Um, it might be uh, putting something in chat that may be a really big barrier for you and you are, you know, 
showing a different part of yourself to this new community. Um, you might be sharing things just with yourself. You're asking yourself questions. Um, either way, you're doing a really big thing for yourself and for the North Star Reach community, um, and we appreciate it. So that's that's my uh, how do I do? And she's our brand new she's our brand new person here. So how amazing is that? <laughs> Thank you so much. So I I asked. Um, Monica to do that because I got a beautiful email from one of our participants um, yesterday who said listening to the parents talk yesterday was so helpful to her because you um, she's she has never been able to tell people how she really feels and she's never never been able to put into words the struggles and what's interesting is what I realized last night when I was reading her email is we had three parents speak to you who are very far in the journey of being a parent of a sick kid. So um, I think Bridget is, I don't know, years, many years in. Jack was, um, I think, 18 months when he had his transplant. And I don't know, he's 12 now, like 13 now, 12. Um, so Bridget's been doing this a long time. Larry Jr. is 21 or almost 21. He's 20. Um, Charlotte's child is also 21. So like you're watching parents who've been at this for so long that some of the pain of talking about it is easier because some of it <laughs> is easier because I could tell you Bridget and I talked last night. We were both like, Oh boy, that's, I mean, it's exhausting because of going through all of this. So I just want you to know that like being here is a huge step in starting to process all of this. And I know that if we had had this type of venue early on in our children's care, we might not be comfortable turning off our camera. We might not be comfortable sharing and really just listening to the other families who have gone through this and you know, we're still smiling. We're still, you know, we're, we're surviving. We're do we are happy people. And I think that that is, um, it's something that really to really to think about. So just know that we see all of you and understand that we're all in different spots in this journey. And, um, it's good for me to hear feedback like that, because that might be helpful to have a parent who's brand new and in her journey or, or his journey that isn't feeling like they've got some of the strategies down to hear from somebody like that. So I just wanted to mention that. And there's a few other things I wanna talk about. Um, this afternoon at 3.30, um, there is a parent's guide to coping. Um, if you were here yesterday morning, you heard Bridget Shank talk about, um, she told a story. She was the last storyteller in the morning. and. She has some amazing strategies for coping. Um, they make me laugh, honestly. Um, and her and her husband will be here and they're gonna talk about coping strategies. Now I can tell you in my research to get the stuff together for this conference, I talked to her and she told me two things that she uses for coping. And one of them I do now from that conversation that I had with her. So super helpful strategies for things for you to walk away from here and say, ooh, I can do that thing Bridget suggested. Um, and it's very helpful. Uh, we have another mom that's gonna join us whose daughter is getting ready to go to a university. And not like me with my Will, who's getting ready to go, who's a healthy kid, who I, you know, it's just the typical separation anxiety that I have about that. But it's her sick kid that's leaving for college in a different state. <laughs> So we're going to talk a little bit about transitioning and what it looks like when you're in a situation that you're terrified for. So um, that'll be at 3.30. It, we, we are hoping to be able to open that up. So if you have, if you choose the challenge by choice to turn your cameras on for that session so we can talk strategies together, I think it's beautiful if you say, we're struggling at school. What strategies did you use with your sick kid? I think it's really helpful. Also, we'll have somebody, um, Amy's really careful about reading the comments. So we'll make sure somebody's on the comments so we're paying attention. Okay. Um, all right. So I am going to, 
I, I can't, it's Kristen here. There you are, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi there. Um, and Bridget, are you here? I see your feet. I'm here, hold on. <laughs> I see <Okay>. your feet. <laughs> So I'm in, the I'm, in the car. I'm in the car. Hi, everybody. Which I appreciate that you went and did your walk this morning. You're doing no, your I haven't walked yet. I haven't walked yet. I'm whenever I have talked with Kristen, she's my she's my, my amazing life saving trauma therapist. By the way, people, um, I I always walk. So I decided during her session I was going to walk, and I I'm going to meet you now because I'm I'm ordering a diet coke at McDonald's before oh. my walk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you? You're with me, sister. I tell you, Bridget and I are sisters. We really are. So um, <laughs> that's my dad. Yeah. Um, my team heard my trauma this morning that I went to the Diet Coke place in our town and they were resurfacing the ground. So I didn't get my Diet Coke today. I know, right? <laughs> So, okay, yeah, that's not the best self care we know. Um, so, I want to introduce. So, um, in a second, we're going to have Bridget introduce you to somebody that's helped her a great deal. And honestly, I was a, I watched the session she did last year, like three or four times myself. Um, and you know, it's funny. We we talk about like my son um, in our session yesterday. We talked about the fact that he has PTSD from my daughter's illness, and we talk about um the fact that we have sick kids and I think we forget that there's all this trauma that's connected with that like we don't even use the word trauma like you know you think of trauma and you think of tragic events you don't necessarily think of like the long haul longevity of having a child that's sick and it doesn't get better so um when I first met Bridget I thought how does she have it all together? Well, now that I've gotten to know her, I know she really doesn't. <laughs> no, but like, really, she processes things so well and she talks things out and she'll tell me how she's feeling and she'll tell me when she's overwhelmed and that is not me. No one knows when I'm overwhelmed. I keep my mouth shut about it. And I was so impressed with her. And I said to her, where'd you get these skills? Because she's not been, she hasn't had a sick kid as long as me. So I'm like, you know, I'm a little competitive and I'm thinking I should have this together. If she's got it together, Marianne, get it together. Well, she told me that she sees this amazing person who deals with trauma therapy and has, she has said, saved her life. So I was like, I got to meet this woman. So she's like, yeah, let me hook you up. She came last year. She helped so many of our families. We had a lot of people ask her to return. So we have asked her to be a keynote speaker this year. And I have asked Bridget to kind of give a little bit of a background if she's not in the middle of her Diet Coke order. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm paying, but this is more important. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> I have asked Bridget to get a little, a little bit of her background on kind of <laughs> her journey and what it's meant to their family. So, and we all know how important Diet Coke is. So we're going to, you know... <laughs> Just deal. <laughs> so, um, so I came to know uh, our keynote, Kristen Marzoff. Um, how many years ago, Kristen? Four, or five, five Probably years ago. Four, or five. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah, about right. four or five years ago. Um, we, my um, son Jack, um, had a liver transplant. Uh, 10 years ago. He was 18 months old. And um, we found out he was sick after, right after his first birthday. And um, one week before we found out he was sick, we found out we were pregnant with our second, Grace. Um, Jack and uh, Jack's transplant was supposed to happen the same week as Grace was due, nine months from then. Um, that's how long they figured Jack would live until he needed a transplant. Um, and he, he wasn't the sickest kid. He was, he was very, very sick, but he wasn't the sickest kid. So other kids got up on the transplant list. People who have transplants in this community understand that very well. Um, so my husband had to be the donor. So they induced me um, f uh, three or four weeks early so that Grace was born. Grace was born not non-responsive. It took five minutes to um, revive her. A week before that, my heart all, also stopped during a procedure to turn her because she was breech. Um, and then four weeks after that, my I said goodbye to my husband and my son, and they went into a transplant procedure. Um, so um, 
not surprisingly, <laughs> we had a significant amount of trauma happen. Um, uh, and we had lingering PTSD. And for, I, I tried lots of different kinds of therapy for years. Uh, I did EMDR, talk therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy. I was on a couple different medications. Um, and we, th- it, it, and then we took a break. We moved to the, from the city to the suburbs. We took a break and, um, and we thought everything was going okay. And it just wasn't. Um, I had a disassociative episode um, uh, shortly after we moved out here. I, and I ended up in the emergency room and I have very little memory of what had happened. Um, and so my mom actually is also a therapist and she said, you need to, call, you need to do um, somatic experiencing. I see, you, you really need to do sort of the, the creme de la creme trauma therapy. And I knew I, I needed to. So I called Kristen and they were full because they're so amazing. And then I waited, waited, waited on the waiting list. And finally there was an opening and I got in with her um, about four years ago. And then my husband got in with her or with her team, different therapists, my son and my daughter, Jack and Grace were also with her because what we learned is that trauma, um, uh, our entire family had experienced the trauma. Um, even though I, I, uh, Jack was very little and Grace was little, they, uh, they had signs of PTSD. We learned so we, we were in weekly ther- couples therapy and individual trauma therapy for almost three, four years. And, and we, and when, um, and when Marianne says, you know, how, what she's like, how does Bridget do about, it was, it was day after day, after day, after day work, implementing the strategies that Kristen's going to introduce you to following their, their guidance, doing the work, like doing the work every single day, every single week, even when it was hard, because it, when it was hard was the most important time to be doing it. Um, and they, they honestly got saved. They saved our lives. The, this trauma therapy saved our family's lives, um, saved our marriage. Uh, uh, ja, ja, uh, the kids are doing amazing. So um, sh- this Kristen is um, everyone put everything down, <laughs> what they're doing and, and let her guide you through the next session um, keynote and then hopefully you can take some of what she talks about but then also explore getting if you feel like you have um, trauma that you need to process around your kids health or your own health um, you can find help um, because it works I mean it 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 really works it works so Kristen you know how much I love you but anyway this is Kristen Marzoff, and um, she's amazing trauma expert in the world. And um, and here, here you go. Bridget, I, thank you so much. You're so sweet. And I have really, really, really enjoyed working with you as guys as a family. And I'm just thrilled that you're doing so well. And I just hope you get a chance to pull over and enjoy your Diet Coke here now in a few minutes. You've done a great job with this comment. <laughs> I'm so, so happy, you. so happy to help and introduce you. All right, take it away. Absolutely. Well, so thank you, Bridget. Uh, thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Amy, for your all your hard work in putting this conference together. Thank you, Monica and Coach Mike for that great start. Um, this is just an amazing conference. You guys are going to have so much fun when you get to be together in person again, and it's going to come, it's going to happen. Um. I just want to slow down. First of all, let me tell you just a one or one or two minutes quickly about myself. And I am the director of a group called the Family Resilience Group in Arlington Heights. Um, we are all trauma trained and very trauma focused. What that means is we really look at what people have gone th- are going through, not in terms of just a di- vague diagnosis that's a cluster of symptoms, but instead, what have you as a human being gone through? So that's, we do use somatic experiencing. It's a kind of an up and coming new cutting edge technology. In fact, interestingly enough, it's coming to Ann Arbor. You guys, the professionals here in the group are gonna have a chance to train in somatic experiencing in I believe starting in February of 2022 next year. So feel very free to reach out to me. I'm gonna put my email address in here right away for you guys. 
So anybody who has questions, needs, uh, needs any other further resources, I'm available and around. Um, you know, lots of you guys have been talking about landing and community here. So enjoy this, this expansiveness, maybe considering putting your, um, your computer on gallery, allowing your, your uh, cameras to remain on as you can so that we get a chance, yes, to share the community that's here because our systems land safest and best when they're in community. And that's a concept that we will return to over and over and over. And that is the idea of landing and what feels safe and what feels pleasant. So let's take a moment now. And I'd like to go ahead and introduce you guys to what is one of our sort of the cornerstones of the work that we do with families here. And that is the concept of mindfulness and slowing down. So, Let's go ahead, take a minute now and get yourself comfortable. You might want to sit back. Feel free to turn your camera on or off for this segment. It'll be about 10 minutes worth that we'll use of our time here. And I'm curious for you guys to explore a little bit deeper what your own goodness and resources that you walk around with inside your own body are. So go ahead and get yourself calm, perhaps getting yourself comfortable. Go on ahead and adjust yourself, maybe starting to look around the room just a little bit. You should be all set, Kristen. Okay, real good, thank you. Starting allow yourself to look around the room at where you are in this present moment. Is there anything you need to do to help yourself feel better and be more comfortable? And where would you like your eyes to land in the room? What feels good to you? Allow your eyes to do whatever they'd like to do. Sometimes they like to focus and sometimes they don't. Somatic experiencing is about learning where to choose to put our attention. So perhaps you'll put your attention on something that's comfortable in this moment. Finding your feet, maybe. That tends to be comfortable for lots of folks. Perhaps your chair is comfortable right now, or it's nice to just sit back and have a break. Maybe you like thinking about being off work today, or the sound of rain is pleasant if you have that there. If your mind wanders, the way it's designed to wander, no worries. Just come on back to that sensation that you notice that's pleasant. Hmm. Staying even longer. And while some of you might love the permission to sit back and rest for 10 minutes, others of you might be encountering an irritated or restless part in you right now. I get that, yeah. I'm not always happy when someone asks me to slow down. And that survival part in me sometimes wants to shout, don't you get it, I can't, or it wants to multitask. And if this happens in this moment, you want to take your time then in slowing down. It doesn't necessarily mean you can't slow down. It means you might take a few extra minutes. 
to keep bringing your attention back to what's comfortable. Maybe you might notice yourself moving and allowing that. Perhaps you'd like to stand up and rock or pace the room. Would you like to move your legs or fingers? So today with the camera off and this safety, allow your body to move in any way it would like. Yeah, next, look around the room again. The room you find yourself in today. Where do you want your eyes to fall? Do they wanna be open or closed? Each person will land in their own special way. You might also start to zone out or float, which we would want to welcome. It's the body's way of resting. Hmm. Perhaps you can allow the zoning out instead of multitasking, right here in this moment. Coming back to feel your feet and your chair. Your body landing even deeper perhaps in your chair. You may notice yourself as tired. Yeah, you've earned this rest. And perhaps coming back again, wandering back slowly to feel your feet. You already know how to rest, but with as alert as you've had to be lately, you may have forgotten how to allow it. Whew. So maybe listening with your ears now perhaps to traffic, sounds, or if you're blessed, nature sounds. If you feel shaking or twitching, those are your muscles naturally setting, settling in. Let's not be afraid of that. And while we help you challenge yourself by choice, it's okay if you're having a harder time sitting right now. Perhaps just tuning in to this in the background feels good today.
And last, let's help you lengthen your exhale now. Go ahead and notice how long you can breathe out all the way perhaps down through your body to feel your feet in your shoes. And after some longer exhales, let your attention land on your shoulders and upper back. And for these last few minutes, we'll stay there. If your mind wanders, bring your attention on back to your shoulders or upper back. Hmm. Yeah, so come on back really slowly, wandering your way back on your own timetable. Maybe making your way back into the room that you're in and back into a bit of soft focus with your eyes. Yeah. Anybody has a sense of what they're noticing in themselves, feel free to add it in the comments section. Also, it's okay if that just doesn't feel like it's something you want to go ahead and add or you don't want to come out of this good place in the moment. All good. But let's take a moment and see what you noticed during that time. Just for yourself at least. Did you like it? Did you find yourself irritable or struggling? Oh. Was that a little harder for you? Yeah. It is hard, isn't it, Lorena, to keep the mind from running? Yeah. That's where we relentlessly keep coming back to the body and finding something pleasant in the body to come back to. Because our minds are designed, we have monkey mind, we're designed to run, they're designed to move as primates. We're higher level thinkers. Yeah, the fidgeting is good. Fidgeting is good. In fact, what we do with that is we just encourage people to fidget more. <laughs> so if I see someone's feet tapping, I might tap along. We're just going to encourage all that good stuff in your body. So this is one of the primary skills that we teach the families that we work with. We encourage folks to do just what Bridget does, did, or she talked about which is to keep coming back to this place over and over relentlessly. And it's not easy. It's not how we're necessarily conditioned as a society. Um, you know, I remember one time I had a client tell me that as she practiced slowing down during the week, that it dawned on her that this is the key to the universe. And I'm not sure I can say that slowing is the key to the universe quite, but it does change a lot. It really does change a lot for families. And that's what we're gonna talk about today and consider that as you slow and have more consciousness, more mindfulness, what changes, what happens? When we slow, we can think better, okay? We can experience life more deeply. We can feel more deeply. Like Marianne said, she could notice with Bridget and in interacting with Bridget. Slower paced bodies heal better. 
Everybody can take that in for a minute. Slower paced bodies heal better. Their immune systems are boosted with more rest. Now, slow does not necessarily have to mean boring. It doesn't have to mean flat. I love what Mike started us with, Coach Mike, in that movement and the dance especially, how much fun it was to come on to one of my favorite songs, to say on Earth, Wind, and Fire. Raise the roof. You got it. And so as I came on to that, that's exactly it. And I think, Kat and Lorena, you mentioned that. Moving. Yes, let your system move at first if it wants to. And then we can settle in. So let's not fight it. Let's not fight that at all. I had another client say to me after a mindfulness exercise, you know, this slowing down thing is really revolutionary. And it took me a little while to digest that one, although I kind of knew it was right at some level. It is a little countercultural. Our society does not teach us how to slow down, right? America runs on Duncan, get more done in your day. That's what we're taught. Those are the mantras we hear. And I'm always, I'm always surprised because it's the moms who come to the ball games that I sit with sometimes that are so busy and they just tell us this long list of things they're busy with. And it's almost as though they're the alpha moms. They're the ones doing it right. I'm like, I don't know about that people. And then what about the kids that are completely overscheduled? We call those folks high achievers. So... I kind of have to question some of that uh, just because, again, I've learned and I know the benefits of slowing down and I've brought this to so many families, including my own. Um, I always used to say that even in junior high, I could get the entire house down for a nap. Um, so <laughs> I think it came out of defense, just my own self-defense in that moment. But something profound happens when a family values slowing down. We get to watch ourselves and our loved ones more closely. And that's what it especially does for us. It brings us to awareness. We can't change anything that we can't see. How are you gonna change it? But when we land in quiet, you might look over at your child and notice something that you never noticed before. Or decide not to make a, make a big move because you do notice your child cuddled in. So maybe we'll just stay. Again, had you been racing around, and I know we all have a thousand things to do, but had you made the hard choice, and it is a hard choice, to stop and slow, then yeah, yeah, interesting things can happen. Parents are the drivers of the paces of our family. So remember that. You are in charge, not your child in charge. It feels sometimes like our kids race around and we have no control or there's nothing we can do. Keep in mind, you are the driver of the pace of the family. And the highest intimacy and connection, I always kind of think that with, with, with another human being in quieting down and staying right there together. It takes profound trust to allow your bodies to feel safe and our bodies to land safely in connection next to each other. And there's some really super profound healing in that for us and for our kids, as we've seen, especially when we do it as a whole family. Um, when we're right in this moment and we're mindful, like I said, we're aware. And what we do then is we're getting out of that cycle that's just so exhausting. Um, that cycle of reacting and then feeling guilty about it and having to make up for it and having more consequences. If we slow down at first, we make fewer mistakes. So it feels longer on the front end, but on the back end, it's actually not. And that's the piece to kind of wrap our minds around that feels a little bit countercultural. Now, let's do a little bit quickly here, a little bit of biology training, because our biology does not necessarily help us slow down. Our biology is primed to go fast. In fact, here, I'm going to start. All right, let me see what we've got here on the moment. All right, so this is, hang on one second. All right, so our nervous system is our central processing unit. It's the iOS on our phone, okay? So think about it in that regard. It runs everything. It's the nerves that run through the muscles and tell them what to do. People 
people hurt themselves and they go to stretch and do PT to help with their muscles, totally neglecting the nerve that's been traumatized by that injury, for example. We focus on the nerves because it's the nerves that run everything. They're the iOS, they're the central processing unit here. Imagine if your phone's iOS was, was wonky, like forget it, your phone doesn't work basically. So this is the model that we start teaching folks of the nervous system. And this is where we start. Bridget will know this very well. She's got this practically tattooed on her arm in the moment, I'm sure. It's, it's supposed to toggle back and forth. Okay, so we're supposed to have this up, which is our sympathetic nervous system. And we're supposed to have this down, which is the parasympathetic. Okay, really super simple. We're supposed to have a busy Saturday and a lazy Sunday a busy day than a restful night. It's supposed to toggle back and forth, our nervous system is. What happens, we run into trouble when it gets stuck in any one of these places. And our bodies are like rechargeable batteries. So that again is where rest comes in. And um, when we have a good night's sleep, my gosh, how many of us have felt like we could move mountains after that good night's sleep, right? So this is also the next slide I'd wanna show you. Another, again, kind of learning about the nervous system still. This is sort of a natural up and down you can see. So there's the up, of course, the activation, the busyness, the frenzy of getting out in the morning. And then there's the who after the kids have gone, for example, in the morning. And you get way a chance to go ahead and come on all the way down. When you've gotten enough rest, our body naturally starts looking around again. When you've had enough rest, and it's, a, it's an interesting thing to try someday, but if you actually allowed yourself to stay in your pajamas for two, three, four days sort of a thing, you would get bored. You'd start looking for projects. Your feet would start tapping. And that's an indicator that you're ready to move again naturally. Yeah. Now, a lot of times our bodies look like this, our nervous systems really look like this, honestly, which is boom, straight up, right? Ah, there's a shock. Ah, my dog just got skunked. Ah. And then we come down gradually. Now, the statistic, again, that Bridget knows really well here is that eight minutes of prolonged stress, eight minutes up, takes two hours to come down from. Okay, that's kind of important for us to kind of wrap our minds around here for a second. This is not a one-to-one -one ratio. This is not a eight minutes of up and you're going to spend eight minutes. Come on down. You're good. No, 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 no. <laughs> I got in the smallest little tiniest fender bender and then sat in a rocking chair for 45 minutes to recover from it afterwards, just in the parking lot, just a boom was all it was years ago. And my husband looked at the car and he thought, he said, oh, I got to go. Or he looked at me rather. And he said, I've got to go look at the car and see how it is. You're a wreck. I'm like, no, I'm just letting my system have all the time it needs in the world. I'm not hopping up and running into the next activity here. This next slide here now is what we call the window of tolerance. So basically it's that your day goes up and down within a certain window of what's manageable. You know what you can manage. You know how your day usually goes. When I have a day that's in my window of tolerance, I usually call it uneventful. It's just a regular old day and not a lot big happened one way or the other, but sometimes our days look like this. Okay, so this is hopefully really intuitive too. This is we go up, 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 and it goes up so high, whoops, it spins out. Or this one goes up and the down is started. Oh, thank goodness, that down is started. Oh, I love rest. I'm gonna stay in bed. In fact, I'm gonna stay in bed so much that I might not even get up tomorrow at all. So, we can see here that when our nervous system sort of spins out on the high end, we call it anxiety. On the lower end, we might call that depression. Okay? And so that again is what we do is we work with our bodies as a group here. We help folks instead of going towards, for example, depressive thoughts, they work with helping their body feel better. This is a slide of what our kids and we 
I will say you guys, especially, I say we always, because I honestly think all these principles are things that all of us as human beings share. These are common experiences in our nervous system. But this is more of a prolonged, stressful place. Now, this is a place that is, um, this, has, this place has the potential to create more damage. Our bodies are designed to go, like we, did, we saw earlier, go up and down. They're designed to have that stress and they're, that's okay. It's almost like exercise. It's almost good for them to have a little bit of a challenge and then to come on down. This though is an up and a prolonged stressful experience here. So this is somebody who's coming on up and not coming down. So somebody that, for example, looks like they can't get enough sleep to get their body down at the end of the day or can't get themselves to settle down enough to be able to focus. Um, our kids may be in this place, especially after a procedure or um, a more difficult uh, doctor's visit, for example, something like that. This is a place then where unfortunately, our bodies just get bathed in all kinds of um, adrenaline, uh, epinephrine, and it becomes, it becomes a bit toxic to the body over time, okay? So I'm gonna give you this to look at now, much better than having to look at all those slides. Um, so let's take a moment now and slow and come on back to that pleasant place that you were you've noticed in your body or your experience from before. And this doesn't have to be big. We don't have to take a lot of time here. But as you go back to that place, see if it feels even 2% familiar for you. Yeah. So choosing to be mindful might mean that you have to choose to do less as a family. The parents that we work with come to realize that their own self-care, their own mindfulness and therapy pays just dividends to their children's health. You might come to realize also that your child's immune system might improve. Greater parasympathetic tone, so more rest, comes up so strong in so much research. I'm not going to take the moment. It's so easily available. If you do uh, Google mindfulness, you Google parasympathetic reactions, vagal tone, there are so many studies out there that just uh, boost immune system, lower blood pressure. There's actually 30 points IQ difference. Yes. Yes, Monica, I just saw your eyes raise, <laughs> eyebrows raise there, yes. There's a 30 point IQ difference. When we have a kiddo take a test in dysregulated or out of their window of tolerance mode versus more reg neurologically regulated mode, I know. So keeping in mind then too, that with this COVID era, if you slow down, you're gonna be able to assess the COVID risk more accurately. You're gonna be able to make the good decisions for your child or handle their upset even better. Um, so let's keep this in mind too. This is another piece of information on in our biology. I always make sure parents know, and that is that your child's nervous system, they don't have a fully formed parasympathetic, so that down, that ability to rest, that's not fully there even physically in their body until age seven. So before age seven, yeah, kids look a little crazy. They look a little wild and they race around because they're trying to take care of their bodies by running in that way. So let's go on, let's see here. I do want to take this and I want to go ahead and take this very care. Oh, I only have a few minutes. Okay. Let's do really quickly a practical application of this. Hang on one second. Okay. We're back. Good. All right. Um, 
let's take a practical application of this really quickly. And that is the idea that as I started to think about some of you parents, what you guys might have gone through, is that some of the most, the most difficult thing to go through as a parent is to sit next to your child or be with your child while they're going through either a procedure, they're in pain, any of that. So I thought I'd kind of take just a minute to kind of address that as an example here. Again, let's remember that slide that I mentioned that went up and came straight across enduring. That's a little bit of what your child's body is going through then in that moment of the procedure or the surgery or that, or that tense doctor's visit, perhaps, even though you're trying to make it light, they're picking up perhaps on your signals. Um, the, don't forget that the, the stressful place right there is hard on their bodies. So what we want to do is really intentionally de-escalate them at that point. Um, the doctor visit might evoke an anxious or a hyperactive reaction. All that speeding up and racing around is super normal for a child. It's annoying sometimes on our own nervous system, but it's really normal and healthy for a child to discharge that. They really honestly do need to run around. Keep in mind then that you, you are your child's nervous system role model. So you'll want to model then the coming down afterwards. You might model or talk to your child about how they'll take the rest of the day off of school and you guys will cuddle together. Or you guys are going to sit and read a story afterwards. Um, if needs be, uh, finding a weighted blanket. Weighted blanket. If you haven't found one yet, do. They're marvelous. Hammock. Another really super important tool for again, rocking and getting our nervous systems to settle. We've learned that when our nervous systems settle, yeah, Bridget, I know. Thumbs up to weighted blankets and hammocks. My best friends too, I agree. So um, kids with medical conditions can be jumpier. They can be higher energy because their bodies are remembering. They're remembering the trauma, our heads, don't have necessarily always, depending on their age, they may not have a memory of it in their head if they're younger than three, frontal lobe right here, but their body sure does remember it. And our bodies hold that memory. Um, so just know that your child is remembering, bring your calmer body to sit next to your child when they're in pain. One of our favorite sayings is that when little people are overwhelmed by big emotions, it's our job to share our calm and not to join their chaos. Again, I'm gonna say that again. When our little people are overwhelmed by big emotions, it's our job to share our calm and not to join their chaos. So I'm going to go ahead and just open the floor if you guys have questions and I do see, so I wanna slow here and I'm gonna to notice together that we only have about three minutes left. So, I'm kind of guessing there may be some questions out there that we didn't get to answer or you guys didn't get to ask. So my email is down there. Feel really free to go ahead and, and um, you know, we can talk about it at that point if you guys wanna just catch me offline here. Um, Lorena had our dopamine levels low during this. You mentioned epinephrine. Yes, yes. Dopamine levels are low. That's one of the things that then happens, for example, if someone has PTSD and then falls into what would be classified, say, as a clinical depression place, then yes, what you're doing is you've got a body reaction there basically happening. We always say depression isn't necessarily in the mind, it's in the body. And so we, we hold that heavy, hard to get out of bed place, for example, or anxiety. We hold this racing that we can notice sort of in our own bodies and our own systems. If you're having a hard time getting your system to settle down, if you notice that in yourself in this exercise, about 10 to 15% of people have so much trauma that it really, really is hard to land. Now, we did a really short exercise here. So don't beat yourself up. I Had I had you in the office, we would have probably done about 20, 25 minutes worth maybe. And it really would have given you more time to land. So again, keep in mind that concept that it's not that you can't land, it's that it takes longer for you to land. So take that time in life. And we've learned, Bridget's a testament to that, her family is, and we've learned here through all of our experience that it's... Um, really worth it to do. So 
Hey, Kristen, can I jump? Can I say something? Sure. For my own thing. Yeah, I mean, you, you what, what Kristen did in that 10 minutes, we, I did for a year. Yes. And yes. after like a, a whole year. Yes. And after a year, I, I asked her, when is this going to, when am I going to get better? Like, the, I, I can't take it anymore. This is so slow. This is, I, <laughs> please. I drove you Don't, crazy with this. Stuff. You drove me crazy. You drove me crazy. I mean, like, batshit crazy. And, and then there was that moment where I was like, oh, it worked. And it's the, I mean, so what, it, it's true. What she did in 10 minutes will take, could take years if you've experienced, like, long-term, uh, that long-term uh, heightened elevated levels of stress which a lot of us here in the group have like it was years for us it was every day every moment every hour of every day we were in a heightened state of stress and and that then on the back side takes years to fix um but you can do it like you it it works you can you don't have to stay up there now i toggle all the time i mean I, it's like it is tattooed on me so yeah so anyway so yep yep and that's exactly it and again keeping in mind it's just not what our society teaches us to do so um kelly's got a great oh you answered her i think we want to take that out yeah right? if, if, if the families and the patients only agree to one type of therapy for couples family individual etc what would be most beneficial to start with great great question kelly and that is this a lot of people put, if they have limited resources or people are not cooperating or don't have time, they put the kids in. That's not where to put your therapy dollars, to be really honest, because then your child's going to end up learning. Yes, they'll learn some great skills. My guess is, though, a lot of them might be gone by the time you're out in the park, the child is out in the parking lot, they forget. And what we have to do, what we do at our place at least, is we try to help the parents know these skills because really it's you guys that have to reinforce them. Because the minute that a child gets out of their window of tolerance and they're up real high, they're not thinking. Their brain is not online. They're just reacting. And it's just an acting place. It's actually a reptilian place, actually, to be honest. So I suggest, Kelly, I would suggest strongly to start with parents. And the two of you come in, you guys talk about how you're doing, you talk about how to reshape the environment, you talk about what your child needs. Eventually, it might get to a place where your child joins or your spouse joins, but just start with yourself, really. So if our families are looking for um, therapy to go through um, to help them with dealing with their um, children's illnesses, um, trauma therapy seems not intuitive to me. Um, can you just really quick explain why trauma therapy is really um, helpful for families like ours? Um, because the body is remembering anyway. Uh, if you don't do trauma therapy, you will be working most likely with your head. Cognitive behavioral therapy works with the head. It helps you understand what's going on, but I can understand this room is warm, but it doesn't mean it's getting any warmer. I would actually have to go take some action and do something with my body, which is to walk down the hall and turn on the air, for example, to get this place cooler. So just because you think about it or understand it, I learned after 18 years in the field, doesn't lead to a change necessarily because our bodies are fighting us. I hear things from people like, I can't change and I don't know why. That's because your body's here in the room, your body's hearing it and your body's panicking or something else. Um, there's a really good, uh, I'm going to put it here on the resources, traumahealing.org. And that's a good directory nationwide of somatic, in, somatic experiencing therapists. Now, it doesn't have to be somatic experiencing in any stretch. It's a newer theory coming around. Um, but anybody who is really honestly going to speak that trauma language and talks about themselves as trauma informed is pretty important. Okay. Wonderful. Are there any other questions for Kristen? Bridget, thank you for bringing Kristen to us. Kristen, thank you for giving us your time today. We appreciate you and um, 
appreciate all your resources. And I think it, yeah, Kat, uh, um, I've had a few of the moms text me during this session saying how helpful this was. And this is not what they expected, but this is so helpful. So that is really cool in my opinion. So thank you so much. Sounds good. Thank you. All right.